Oh, we got a funny man on with us now. Ian Carmel joins us, stand-up comic, host of All Fantasy Everything, the podcast. What's up, Ian? Okay, well, we're going to start right with your hat, right? Because you are yes. a Blazers fan. You grew up in Oregon, so if people are wondering how that happens, that's how it happens. Um, and they've been in tank <laughs> mode for a minute. What do you do with seasons like that? Because as a Spurs fan, I get it. it. It happens. What do you do with these types of seasons? You learn to love the likes of Duwop Reith and uh, <laughs> Delano Banton. Who? He's and you convince yourself that these are going to be major parts of a, a uh, eventual championship winning team. Takes you time. lie to yourself. You lie. Yeah. You spend it years lying to yourself. It takes time. It takes time. It does. It does. And you and you end up getting really into uh, what is apparently going to be the worst draft class in years. I know. <laughs> you guys really didn't time that well, did you? Future is no, bright. No, we. <laughs> the, the future is bright. That future just might not start until 2026. <laughs> Future's bright. I'm in the same boat, but we have Wimby. Go on, sorry. That's yeah, true. you're not in the same boat at all. I don't want to hear that. I mean, it sounded yeah. good as I you're started to say You're in a yacht. It. He's in a goddamn canoe. You're right. You're just yeah, sort of like I'm, on a tube flung by. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a tube, and there was a chance I was going to get that yacht, too. Like, last year, there was like, you know, this yeah, yacht is up for grabs. I know. You might have, because I cried. Ian, I legit cried when they opened the envelope, and it was Spurs are getting the number one. Legitimately had tears of joy coming down my face like like it had already like we'd won a championship already how's that oh i remember uh, the feeling because it happened when we drafted greg odin so i'm very <laughs> familiar oh, no, with that feeling of excitement that you're uh, about to uh, you know join forces with a franchise altering center so you know, I, I, I know it's exactly it well. the same <laughs> Ian, so big news in portland this past off season they move on from damian lillard uh, what was your take on that? Did, did it kind of run its course? Did you think that was the right move at the time? Did you want him to keep him? What, what was your thoughts on that? I, w I was grateful that, that we would always have the rap albums uh, <laughs> to, to remember our time together. <laughs> uh, I, you know, honestly, I was, I was happy for him. It felt like an amicable divorce, even, even if it got a little weird with where he was going to be moving after the, uh, <laughs> the divorce was completed. But... I think Portland will always love Damian Lillard. I mean, that's that that's my favorite player who I got to watch throughout my career uh, as a Portland Trailblazers fan. And yeah, it was it was time for him to go. You know, he he he'd taken us as far as as we were going to go. The team clearly couldn't put winning pieces around him in a way that he needed to have around him at that point. So yeah. I think every, not a single Portland Trailblazer fan who doesn't wish him well. Then, We're also all a little bit Milwaukee Bucks fans. So now do you still follow, do you still cheer for him in Milwaukee as long as they're not playing the Trailblazers? Or Whoever you, cheers or for the Knicks. You're off of That's a great... <laughs> I we're cheering for him. I swear, really? I swear to God, Portland. Class, yeah, we are class such. Act. Yeah, you're class act. We're a little bit class acts. We are a little bit have like a parasocial relationship. Maybe we're like a little bit of like a cuck fan base too because of it. But <laughs> maybe that. <laughs> everyone, everyone in Portland, they do. There's a little bit of Schadenfreude, you know what I mean, when the Doc Rivers thing was first getting off the ground. But now that they're clicking, they're they're, they're moving, they're winning a lot of games. <laughs> I think everyone would like to see see it happen for Damian Lillard. By the way, revealing moment for Lou, who said, who roots for their ex? So now we know a little bit more about Lou Will than we did yesterday. Yeah. Bitter, bitter man. Which I one? Think. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. I, I like, like him I already. Like, uh, I like him. <laughs> um, by the way, on the Dame thing, like when it came out that he was bored, and my favorite part, lonely, in Milwaukee playing video games, I, what did you think of that? I thought sounds like Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, checks out. <laughs> checks out. Yeah. But how can Dame Lillard be lonely anywhere? I got a Stop. good feeling he's found some company he's since, found people. since that interview. He's... <laughs> Reggie Miller, he's... well, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say Chicago's right down the road, man. You can go find some company, you know, even if it's not Milwaukee. Exactly. exactly. It's, like, it's like Austin and San Antonio. Okay, yeah, stop. Mm -hmm. stop. Quick little ride. Um, Reggie, Miller, Reg, Reggie Miller recently said that... Uh, Dame Lillard is in his top ten. Where would where would you rank Dame hmm. of all time? Personally, I would have Damian Lillard in, in my top three with Rasheed Wallace and Kevin Duckworth. But that's just a Portland Trailblazer thing. Right. Reggie Miller said he's got Damian Lillard in his he top said, ten. Yeah, he said he got him in his top all ten of all time. That's big. I think it was a hot take, but you know it, it worked. We're Wait, talking about. I read it. that. I thought he meant but top ten shooters of all I time. He meant he top meant ten players. Trailblazers of all time. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> it's, I thought we were all, I mean, we were all pretty stoked he made top 75 all time. And I thought that was like a generous and lovely thing to say about him. 
Hmm. I don't know about that. Maybe top 10 guys from Oakland, top 10 <laughs> point guard. Oakland, the Oakland list is good. That's the Oakland list, list is very yeah. good. The Oakland list of point guards is amazing. Okay, so you got yeah. you got Duckworth, you got Sheed, Clyde Drexler, Damian Lillard. Yeah. Who <clears throat> of all the players in the history of the Trailblazers deserve a statue outside that arena? All right, so Clyde Drexler's kid got this conversation going amongst Blazers fans, and I guess amongst the national media, too, the other day. I'll tell you this for free. It's not Clyde Drexler. <laughs> Why is that? You don't, get a, you don't get a statue in front of the Rose Garden when you leave town, when you ask yeah. to leave town, and then you go win a championship for another city. That's tough. And where that, like, you go into the Hall of it. Fame as a Houston Rocket, in my opinion, to get a statue, you either have to win a championship with a team or stay with a team for your entire career and be one of its best players. He didn't do either of those teams. <laughs> Are things. So Dame doesn't a get a street. statue either, then. So no statue. Damian Lillard does not get a statue in Ooh, Portland. Here's the statueless Moto Center. Yeah. Statueless. Here's who gets a statue. You can have one of Dr. Jack Ramsey talking to Bill Walton and Maurice Lucas, <laughs> all huddled up together. You got the three of them. <laughs> wow. All talking to one another. That could be a statue. Uh, I think you have a statue of the person who invented Voodoo Donuts. It's just a guy. Fantastic. Holding, like, Trans, uh, holding a pink like, box. Like, put, uh, there's one out here now, too, in LA. Yeah. Okay, we don't hear that. They're everywhere. They're yeah. spreading. I love donuts. We, we, maybe that guy who rides a unicycle dressed like Darth Vader holding bagpipes, like he can get a <laughs> I statue. I thought he was just a crackhead That's in Portland. <laughs> that that doesn't mean he doesn't deserve a statue. Those things aren't mutually fair exclusive. It's <laughs> a fair our, point, crack, yep. our crackheads are employed. We're a whimsical city. <laughs> <laughs> what, ma what made you first fall in love with the Blazers? How did that start? Uh, I So I uh, went to preschool at a place called the Middleman Jewish Community Center in Portland, Oregon. And this was in the early 1990s uh, when basketball teams would still practice at places like that before they had practice facilities. Uh, it went it went on so longer I than went you to would imagine. That's crazy. I bet it did. I yeah, I, 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 I practiced at, I a, at a nursing community teams. college for my first seven years of my career. What? Wow. Yeah. I kind of love it. Yeah. At a nursing community college? Yes. Yes. How Just specific? out there crossing up 78-year-old Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, what is it? Okay, all right. Go on. I like it. So I went to preschool there, and the Blazers practiced at that same facility. So you'd be sitting there, like, eating a knish in the cafeteria. <laughs> and, you know, Jerome Kersey and Clyde Drexler there would walk is. by. R.I.P. And I R.I.P. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and and it was it was just amazing. The town, the city has always loved the Blazers. We have two soccer teams now, but we are primarily a one sport town for most of my life. So I just fell in love with them then. And I assumed that it was a, oh, we go to the finals every couple of years experience for the rest of my life. And it, it has not been the case, but mm. it started like that. That's awesome. So you've been to a lot of games, obviously. Uh, also, Portland's one of the hardest, craziest fans that I we've ever played. I love that, playing it's, in it's awesome playing uh -huh. there, especially in the postseason. My least favorite game ever, obviously, was was when uh, that <laughs> dagger put me out of my misery. That's my worst game ever in Bye. Portland. What is your favorite game you've ever been to as a Portland, and what's your least favorite game you've ever been to? I'm actually glad you brought that up because <laughs> I happened to be at the game where Damian Lillard hit the shot over you. Uh, oh, no. Uh, mm. Yeah. Y'all mm. breathed the air shot. that day. Hell of a shot. I, you've heard it louder in the Rose Garden than I think it's ever been in the Rose Garden before. I That's think even louder than it was. This way. He curled. Oh. Not, not to play, not to say any names, but James Harden was supposed to switch. <laughs> he did it. And then just in the, in the statue that's going to go up front, it's going to be my little white ass like this. <laughs> it would be. That's a weird That would be the picture. <laughs> you're going to get half a statue. I'm going to be the Jalen Rose in the statue. <laughs> you are, you're going to get like a full arm. He's going to get an arm wrong. in it's the statue. Be great. <laughs> you were there. That's kind of amazing that you were there for his worst. I love that. I was. I was hammered. I was in the crowd. I'm actually in the footage of you hitting that shot. Oh, you I can find this. me. I decided I to wear this. a tie that game for some wow. reason. Yeah. So I'm in the crowd cheering. My arm goes up before it goes in. You knew it. That's I it. knew why well, you, I, he had you guarding him. So I knew it, was <laughs> it all comes out now. Okay. So what's the worst game? <laughs> what's the, like, what's the worst game you ever attended? Uh, well, now because of our burgeoning friendship, I'm going to say that, too, because I feel so bad oh, for you. Oh, that's no. nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, just like that, you guys are besties. Uh, by the way, I just have to tell you, when I was 13 and the Spurs were playing the Trailblazers for the Western Conference Finals, I'll, that was the first time I sports cried. 
um, and the Trailblazers. And by the way, this is before anybody here was probably even. How many alive. times have you sports cried since? Probably like four. Like Chris Paul, you know, That's game seven hits a three. All, those types. They're all Spurs related. So that complete silence. Did you ever cry after like an NBA game? See. I, like I cried, I lost the state championship. That was the last time I think I cried in like yeah, a basketball game. I don't game. think I've. I think fans cry more than you guys, yeah. right? Ian, we cry, but they don't really yeah. cry. What does that mean? I think you guys care I more think, than I we think do. it means that we're not making like twenty million dollars yeah. a year. <laughs> you guys care that ca the checks still cash. You know, right? <laughs> like, this and is win not or right. lose, we lose. This Ian. is not okay. Yeah. <laughs> we discovered something about it. All right, we gotta get to the podcast. All fantasy, everything, and I love this because you guys draft. Anything and everything, and I'm talking, it doesn't have to be sports. It can be chips, action stars, bald people, which I think is mm -hmm. amazing. Um, in the first pick in the things not to do at an NBA game draft, <laughs> I know what this is. What is your first pick? I think my first pick is leave early. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. You don't leave early. This is one that kills me, especially this season in Portland, every game I've gone to uh, when I'm back home in, uh, in Portland. People are increasingly leaving early, and that's not what you do. Oh, that's how we need to separate ourselves from the Miami fans, the Thank Laker you. fans, Blazers fans stay. Thank you. And we yes. watch our team get beat by the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's fine, but you stay, good, bad, and ugly. Um, best halftime show, first pick. All right, first pick, and this is almost a career achievement pick. I know. More I, than it is a right now pick. But it's got to go to Red Panda. Red Panda, yeah. Mm. Who's, who's Red Panda? What? Lou Williams. You know, even if you don't know Red Panda, you know Red Panda. Red Panda. Like, what's the act? The woman on the giant unicycle with the plates. Oh, that's my favorite. Where okay. she, kicks just, the, she kicks them up on her head. Michelle, look them. at me. Do I supposed to know her name is Red Panda? Do if I a person's named Red Panda, you should I'm a little busy know. at halftime, okay, Michelle. Okay, you know what? Ian, this is, why, this is why fans and players can't get along. <laughs> Doesn't even know her name. <clears throat> no. Well, that's probably the worst thing oh, about being an NBA screen. player. I've never not, met her or anything. They don't see the halftime. Yeah. We don't see it. Great point. Ian, we're going to move on to college basketball here. You went to Portland State University, yes. who uh, have zero Final <laughs> Four appearances. Uh -huh. Are you into March Madness? And who are you rooting for this year? Are you following it all? Uh, I always have a soft spot for the Oregon Ducks. Uh, but no, I just recorded my uh, a stand up special last weekend. So I've been not as in touch with March Madness as I normally am. Who should who should I be rooting for this year? North Carolina. Or uh, NC State. I North can't root for North so Carolina. So you know what's interesting about North Carolina? We said North Carolina has the average, same average age as the Oklahoma City Thunder. So I can't root for that. Like they're, they're they're like Van Wilder over there. They're like tw they're 23 years old playing college bunch basketball. Bunch of guys getting their doctorates? What's going <laughs> yeah, on out China. there? Yeah, a bunch of med students. Well, that's how it used to be back when they'd stay four years. We're yeah, just going back. Now it's like five, six years. Seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like COVID. you get the COVID year, you get the transfer year, you get the, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, even I've retired since COVID. Like they got to go home. Ian, <laughs> if you okay, I'll give you a team. Yeah. NC right. State has this big dude named DJ Burns. Little baby Zebo. Yeah, you and he's like he's adorable. He has a side hustle that he tells all of his teammates about, where he has vending machines and he's making just love. Yeah, because you can't root for the oh, Dukes. Oh, I you like can't, this guy. Yeah, you're going to like this guy. Did you Google him? <laughs> he got snacks. He I is a full him, yeah. unit. Yeah. He's a... Easy, hey, cowboy. settle hey, down, hey, Chandler. Hey, hey. He is God. a full... He looks he like is. the dude is like cooking everybody at 24-hour fitness. So, yeah. like yeah. that guy? He looks, he looks exactly like that guy. And he's guy. got game. And he, he does. <laughs> and he's lovable. So, yes, that's the one. NC State is the one. Um, we got to do a little Rookie of the Year here because for the entire season since day one, it's Chen Holmgren. Nah, nah, nah. That's all they talk about. And I've been obviously fighting the good Wemby fight, which will clearly be right. Where are you on this controversial debate? I think it clearly needs to go to Scoot because... <laughs> <laughs> I had Scoot as my early pick. He that was Lou's him. pick. I had him as my early pick, and yeah. it didn't. It, it hadn't went my way. <laughs> it 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 hasn't. But lately, he's really he's he's really been playing. He's run through the rookie wall, and the rookie wall has shattered around him. Chet Holmgren. I mean, if we're being completely serious about it, it can't be Chet Holmgren. A, not a rookie. Thank you. Not a rookie. Thank you. B, he's surrounded by. I mean, if you put Victor Wembanyama in Chet Holmgren's place on the Thunder, he would be putting up even crazier stats than he is right now in San Antonio. Yep. Chet's amazing, he's great. We're, we're very lucky we get to watch him in the NBA for the next, you know, 10, 15 years. But when Benyama's doing stuff already, but that makes me- But he's losing every time you do it. 
he is, but it's not his fault. He, like, which, <laughs> which guy would you take on your team going forward? Thank you. No, that's not the 100%. argument. 100%. It is but the argument. argument. There's Part one guy that's averaging 17, 8, and 3 on the right. best team in the West. And there's one guy averaging, what, 19? We're, we're speaking as athletes. Know, on the worst team in the West. We're speaking so as that's athletes. Our, that's our only argument is, okay, this guy's doing it on a shit team. The other guy's doing it on, a, on the best team. Well, who, do the Celtics have a rookie on their team this year? Because then we should just give it to him, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And by the way, he's surrounded by good players. He's had a whole extra year of this. Yeah, so but so did Blake Griffin. Right. He won Rookie of the Year. Victor I don't think that's he right either. He's been a pro for five years already. Oh, so now the Europe game is all comp comparable. But usually we're like, well, it's not the same. It's, it's comparable to, to the kids sitting out and working out every day. And I can't take it anymore. <laughs> what I'm hearing is that we need to reach a compromise, and that compromise lives in Portland, Oregon. His name is Scoot Scoot. Henderson. All right, Scoot it is. I'm good, I'm good with it. It was Scoot to make me look like a genius. I'm down for it. It's true. Um, Play yeah. the long game. Don't worry. You're going you're gonna to get borne out in five, six years when he's, when he's getting his first statue, the first statue that a current NBA player gets in front of an arena. Scoot. Yeah. Did you happen to watch the Clippers Sixers game last night and see the cut? I did. This. Did you this. see this? where he just goes individually, ethers and offends every <laughs> referee, and then decides to go at their mothers, calling them all bitches. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I didn't see the game, but I did catch that particular highlight, That's and then funny. I caught it another 43 times uh, throughout the course of the evening. <laughs> oh, my God. God, I love it so much. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Have you? Hey, by the way, you need to use this in one of your next stand-ups. Anytime you get like, heckled or booed, just go at them, yeah. their mothers. Have you ever done anything like this? I'm... I, uh, I, I I unfortunately have done something like that. <laughs> if, if you do it at the end of the set, it goes okay. If you do it at the beginning, it's kind of hard to get the Ooh, crowd back. I will wow. <laughs> timing See, is everything. An hour of awkwardness. If he captioned that and put it up on Instagram, by the way, that would be one of the bigger crowd work clips yeah. oh, God, <laughs> so that I've seen before. He'd probably he'd get his followers up real fast. <laughs> Late last season, you tweeted, you would kill for Dylan Brooks. <gasps> If he were a trailblazer, why, why Dylan Brooks? You get me, Ian. I just kind of think that's the guy you want on your team. <laughs> yep. When he's on the other team, you're like, I, I hope a bear eats him. I hope he falls off a bridge. Like, Andy, <laughs> like, you hate that guy. But when that person is on your team, out there instigating on your behalf, yes, sometimes it goes wrong. Sometimes it ends up with LeBron taking it personally and then taking that out <laughs> on your team. But that's what <laughs> LeBron does anyway. Yeah. But every, like... Fifth time, will you guys tell me, does Dylan, does a player like Dylan Brooks ever get in your head to the point where it throws off your game a little bit? No. Uh, no, he's just, he's, he's, that's, what, that's what he does. He's like a Patrick Beverly. He's, that's, that's his role, which again, you do like it when it's on your team, but when it's not on your team, it's, 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 it's cringy. It's eye rolling. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's cringy and eye rolling, but does it ever take you out of your game? Are you ever like, I want to hit a shot over uh, this guy? That's for the so amateurs. you take a shot you wouldn't normally you take. Wait, so you're saying you don't think LeBron's, I think LeBron remembers it and that he uses that. Maybe it's backfiring for Dylan Brooks, but. No, is that the only time we've seen LeBron go get, go get 40 points? Like, no. <laughs> I love Dylan Brooks. <laughs> I'm with you, Ian. I think he's hilarious. He's a character. I also, I just love having a villain. The more yes. characters we have, I'm you know, like, that. I like in that. the league who are just like, oh, we got this guy tonight. And then you get to watch his antics in addition to the game. I think it makes for a more uh, enriching fan well, experience. Draymond might be available. This no. <laughs> yeah, by the way, would you want Draymond on yeah, your team? Yeah, would you want that smoke in Portland? Not this team. <laughs> Not. Th I think he would. I think it would be a bad experience for both parties if he joined this team. But if it was the Blazers team from 2019, 2018, would love Draymond Green on that team. Damn. I mean, he's a, he is good at what he does. The you know, 61 games, he's not suspended. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's annoying. When's the special come out, Ian? Uh, it's going to come out sometime in June. We don't have an exact date yet but the uh, the special the book everything drops at the same time good busy month all right we yeah. we appreciate the time so much um maybe the trailblazers will be good in a couple years and we'll still be on the air and then we can have like a whole big party be great i'll come back to celebrate when it's uh when it's cooper flag Scoot, oh and there then, it uh, is there you go. <laughs> i like that for you all right we're doing and that franz wagner <laughs> carmel we'll be back <laughs> Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back like a running back. Yeah. She knowin'